Welcome back. After 30 years in the country, iconic fashion brand Benetton is on a mission to bring back its cool quotient and chart a new growth trajectory. During a visit to India, Massimo Renin, Global Chief Executive Officer of Benetton Group, got into a conversation with Storyboard 18's Del Shadirani to explain the new vision and creative direction for Benetton and the transformation of the legendary brand. Listen in to find out how Benetton is planning to become bold and cool again. Hello and welcome to Storyboard 18, Massimo. It's lovely to have you on the show. Hello, it's my pleasure and thank you for... And welcome to India. This is your first trip and to the country. I'm so delighted to be here. So I'm very happy. Brilliant, brilliant. So let me just ask you straight off the bat, right? Um, what happened to Benetton? It was uh, one of the most innovative companies, one of the most visionary brands. And something happened. It fell out of fashion. It felt out of touch. Um, it was perhaps not as fast as fast fashion and not competitively priced. So when you came in almost three years ago, you know, at the start of the pandemic, when you know, the lockdowns were coming into place and it was a difficult time. So when you stepped into the company with the mandate to turn it around, uh, what did you decide to fix first? Right, so first of all, we have to say that when I started my, my, my journey in Benetton, of course, it was a very tough moment, and, and at that time, all the stores were closed due to the pandemic, and, uh, and all the operations were blocked. And it was not easy to de decide what was the, the, the priority list, right? But first of all, uh, I realized that we have a very passionate and um, shareholder, and the founder, uh, the president, Mr. Luciano Bre, told, told me, look, we have to revamp the brand and we make it cool, as it was cool 30 years ago. Because Benetton is still very well known uh, in every single part of the world, but you know, has been a little bit neglected during the course of the last 30 years, as you said. So we wanted to, 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 to rebuild this coolness. And the first thing we did was, as always, we started from the product, because the product is the key, is the core. So we decided to, you know, to implement a sort of operational uh, system where the product had to have the, the, the quality that the customer and the consumer were expecting. And we started a lot of uh, initiative uh, regarding that, right? So start putting the product as, as, a, as a center of the, of the new project and the old initiative of communication, or, uh, distribution and uh, supply chain that comes after. Uh, where does India stand in Benetton's global scheme of things currently? And what's the agenda for this trip in terms of are you looking at, uh, you know, putting in some investments? What are you focused on over the next, say, two, three years? Right. So first of all, let me tell you that we are very much satisfied about the new management, the local management we have here. The leadership is very strong. Uh, we gave full mandate to the local leader, Ram, uh, to, to implement a new plan in order to turn around the brand locally. And, and actually it's happening. And, and we're very much happy to see that the band is revamping also locally. You can see these, these beautiful stores that will be restored and 50% of the old distribution stores in India uh, will be refurbished or refit in 2022 has been already a part of it and then 2023 the rest. So 50% is a big number. And uh, India is a strategic market for us for many reasons. First of all, um, has been one of the first countries where all the values and principles of the burn have been implemented from the day one. So, color, joyful, sustainability, and attention to consumers. And uh, that was a, a great key factor of success in India. Is after the domestic market is the, the second largest market we have in the world. The potential is huge. Indian population is you know, very attentive to fashion, is getting more and more attentive to what's happening around the world. And we believe that all the consumers that we have in India will be uh, profiled as the future consumer for Benetton. But have you, so you're not setting any kind of targets right now in terms of the number of stores you're looking at to expand to some of the markets that you're getting into? For instance, are you looking at more tier two and tier three markets for Benetton? And what formats are you going to sort of uh, look at? If you could just give us a little bit of an insight into what you're thinking. Sure. We're already very well distributed in India. We are present in, uh, in almost, with almost 200 stores, direct or indirect stores. 
and we are covering commercially a bigger part of India. We are not, we don't have an aggressive opening plan for this year because we want to make sure that the message goes to the consumer uh, as more coherent as possible. Uh, we want to give an, a, a, a journey to all of our consumers that are entering into the store instead of you know, be present everywhere. Uh, we are working very much on the, as you can see, on the campaign, on the image, on the, on the brand. And this is our, you know, our focus for this year. And I would say that uh, we are getting more and more premium, not, not in terms of price, but in terms of perception of consumers, which is our main focus. So we, we don't want to be a competitor uh, in a battle where the price is key. We want to be a competitor in, in, a, in, a, in the perception of the consumer where they want to you know, find an added value in our product. Who is Benetton's consumer today and how are you sort of talking to them, addressing right. them? Well, first of all, we have a core uh, consumer that we don't want to miss and we don't want to lose. And, um, and this is a consumer that is with us for, for many years. He, he, he see and he recognizes he recognize himself in the values of the company and the brand. And, uh, and we don't want to substitute him with the Gen Z consumer or with another generation of consumers. Of course, we want to stretch the, 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 the profile and the portfolio of, of our consumer. How? We believe that new generation are the ones that will be more in target for the, for the direction that we are going into. For example, we're increasing more and more the sustainability products we have into the stores and the, and the, and the quality of our garments. And, and we see the new generation are much more attentive on what we do in this thing, in this extent, right? So, uh, influencers for us are an amplification of our message, but they are not the, 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 the final destination. We don't want to go through them because you know, they, they give more uh, awareness of our brand. They are amplificating our message, and, they are, and this message is getting also into the new generation. But again, you catch them with the product. You catch them with the added value that you can put into the product. It's, it's not a matter of price, it's not a matter only to our advertising campaign. We reach them and we engage them if we have a good product for them and a good message for them. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, thank Massimo. You. It was lovely chatting with you. Now, how is MasterCard leveraging its sports sponsorships in India? We find out from Mansi Narsimhan, Vice President and Head Marketing and Communication South Asia MasterCard on the other side of 